Okay, let's try something together. Open any world map you have available. It can be the one you find in your bookcase or even an online version. Take a look at the vast area covered by water. That's 71% of the Earth's surface. And all that is salt water from the world's oceans. There aren't any borders between the four oceans we've all come to know. But oceanographers and the world's countries did traditionally split these waters into four distinct regions. The Pacific, Atlantic, Indian, and Arctic Oceans. And here comes the big surprise. The scientific community has recently recognized the fifth body of water. It's called the Southern Ocean, and three of the four original oceans border it. It circumnavigates Antarctica and the lower portion of the globe and reaches Australia and the southern portions of Africa and South America. What makes this ocean so special? How did the scientific community eventually recognize it? And more importantly, what mysterious creatures does it hide? <laughs> Let's find out! The Antarctic Ocean, or the Southern Ocean, was first mentioned back in 1937 in the second edition of the International Hydrographic Organization's Limits of Oceans and Seas. That's a mouthful. Back then, this organization considered that it was wrong to consider the Antarctic Ocean as its own distinct body of water. Why? Well, because at that time, an ocean was defined as water surrounded by land and not water surrounding land. However, they reconsidered it in 2000 and voted to include this ocean in the official list. They also decided on the name Southern Ocean over the commonly used Antarctic Ocean. Finally, the organization concluded that the ocean should be considered as ending at the 60th parallel south latitude. But how old is this ocean? Well, many specialists believe it to have formed only 30 million years ago, which would make it the youngest of the world's oceans. It was created when Antarctica and South America moved away from each other during the early stages of our planet's development. This unique water current is a distinctive component of the Southern Ocean, as it helps keep the waters flowing around the icy continent. It's called the Antarctic Circumpolar Current, and it moves to the east with incredible speed. It's estimated that it moves an enormous amount of water per second. Some of the disputes regarding the Southern Ocean also have to do with this amazing current. Some specialists believe it separates the water of the Southern Ocean from the waters of the nearing Atlantic or Pacific. Only the rapid circulating water is considered the Southern Ocean. On the other hand, though, a handful of scientists say that the current actually makes the naming issue more complex by not limiting the waters to a specific geographic location. They believe that the waters in the current are different in terms of composition from waters in the northern oceans because they are way colder and have a lot more salt. Sailors don't really like this new body of water, mostly because of the frequent cyclone-like storms that it experiences. They happen because of the big temperature difference between the ice packs and the ocean waves. As a result, these storms are very difficult to surpass for any sailors that happen to encounter them. I mean, really, these are the strongest winds found anywhere on our planet. More so, the vessels going through this area must also be wary of the frequent icebergs that may pop up every now and then, and also of the low surface temperatures. Just to paint you a better picture, some of the icebergs found here can span over several hundred meters and can exist all year round, regardless of the season. The latitudes from 50 to 70 have even earned the nicknames of Furious 50s or the Shrieking 60s because of these intense year-round storms. Even the landscape is unique. They say the Southern Ocean has bluer glaciers, colder air, and more intimidating mountains than anywhere else in the world. Now, let's get to the mysterious creatures that call this place home, as thousands of species of wildlife live only here and nowhere else in the world. Let's start with the quirky sea pig, or one of the sea cucumbers as it's sometimes called. There are a lot of them in the waters off Antarctica. Why is it called that way, though? Because of its pink hue and round, bloated looks. On a closer look, it even appears to have a little tail and set of ears, just like a pig. They do help a lot with the quality of the waters here, filtering sand and sediment. Then there are the hoff crabs that live on the floor of the Antarctic Sea. 
The Southern Ocean is a cold water environment, but crabs are more adapted to warmer waters. So, hoff crabs gather around the warmth made by volcanic vents. They get the needed warmth and food here. You can find them in large piles, one on top of another, literally filling the space of the vent openings. Now, wonder how they got their unofficial name? Well, it's because of their apparent similarity to the actor David Hasselhoff, whose impressive chest reminded explorers of the crab. Okay. Ever seen a fish that's completely transparent? You'd have to get to these waters down in the south, but they do exist, and they are simply called the ice fish. You can basically see inside them, being completely clear and all. That's because of their see-through skin and because they don't have any red blood cells. Their special power is that they can use antifreeze to prevent their bodies from going solid in the cold waters of the Southern Ocean. Instead of the standard thicker blood, the red one with hemoglobin, ice fish have thinner blood that moves around more easily throughout their bodies, hence giving them the much-needed nutrients and oxygen. Now, is there a monster hidden in these waters? Some people believe this to be the case. And thanks to recent research, we even have video footage of it. Some Australian researchers stumbled upon a bunch of weird-looking creatures that were swimming near the seafloor of the Southern Ocean. This pink blob-like fish seemed to be propelled by a little pair of fins. To quote them on it, it seemed to resemble a chicken just before you put it in the oven. I'm not sure I even want to know what that looks like. It took them some time in research to identify the monster. It's a shy species of sea cucumber, known more by its uh, creative nickname, the Headless Chicken Monster. We've known this creature has existed since the late 1800s, but we've barely ever seen it. And we've only ever captured it on tape once before when it was spotted in the Gulf of Mexico, which is quite far from the waters off the coast of East Antarctica. There's so much we don't know about this creature, like how many of them exist in our waters and how they live, eat, and reproduce. Ever heard of the emperor penguin? It's not a penguin species that just happens to have a crown on its head, if that's what you're thinking. But they are one of those penguins that inhabit this specific location and are also the largest species of their kind altogether. What makes them special is that they make their colonies on the sea ice, and most of them never step foot on land. More so, penguin dads lose almost half their weight while incubating the eggs. They're also fascinating swimmers, able to dive deeper and longer than any other bird, up to 700 feet. Not to mention they can stay submerged for up to 18 minutes at a time as they gather food. We have yet to uncover all the secrets of the mysterious Southern Ocean. But it's clear that it's home to some unique and fragile marine ecosystems. Recognizing it as a new ocean could be one way to focus the public attention on it and help its conservation. A wanderer walking through a desert feels the scorching sun like never before. You can see him from afar thanks to his shining clothes. His long hoodie is covered with foil. It reflects sunlight and protects him from heat. The ground is so hot that shoe soles can melt on it. That's why the wanderer's boots are covered with heat-resistant material. A cloudless sky, barren land, and heat. But the wanderer is not in the desert. He's walking on the ocean's bottom. He doesn't know why this happened, but all the oceans on Earth dried up. It happened almost instantly, and even the greatest minds in the world don't know why. The wanderer knows only one thing. When it happened, his family was on the other side of the ocean for several months. He's been traveling across this lifeless land, and he won't stop until he finds his family. The landscape around is spectacular. People have finally found out the secrets of the ocean depths. The seabed consists of huge mountain ranges and volcanoes. They fell asleep forever after the water had disappeared. Also, there are huge trenches leading to the unexplored depths of the planet. People had to build bridges to get over these enormous cracks in the ground. But most of the ocean floor is flat plains. Boundless, lifeless, merciless. The wanderers walking across a huge canyon. Once, it was swarming with sea life. The man puts on a gas mask, but not because of a sandstorm. Many fish and other marine inhabitants used to live in such canyons. Now, 
All that's left is a terrible smell. The wanderer passes by huge skeletons of whales. Among them, he notices dirty tents. People are hiding there from heat. The temperature in the area is much higher than in the Sahara Desert. One of the main functions of the ocean was to distribute heat all over the planet. The sun emits heat and radiation. The ocean absorbed this energy. Lots of currents were warm, and they carried this warmth around the world. The water got heated at the equator, then it evaporated and turned into clouds. When warm air rose, it pulled along colder air from below. This allowed the energy to be evenly distributed. In simple words, the ocean cooled hot places and brought warmth to cold ones. Now there's none of this. Every day the sun burns the equator and dries up the rest of the planet. The wanderer doesn't come close to the tents. He is carrying the most valuable treasure in the world and doesn't want people to notice him. The inhabitants of Earth are just trying to survive, and many have forgotten about such a thing as morality. Fortunately, the wanderer still remembers. The thoughts of the family help him remain a good person. Sometimes it complicates his life. Like now, for example. In the distance, he sees a young girl. She doesn't look well. There's no one around, and the wanderer decides to help her. Out of his backpack, he pulls a thing worth more than all the gold on the planet, a bottle of water. The girl takes a few sips, but instead of thanking the wanderer, she starts screaming. It's a trap. Her accomplices appear from different sides. Looters, they're gonna take everything. The wanderer runs away. He hasn't eaten for several days, and his strength is leaving him. He won't be able to keep going much longer. The marauders are closing in on him. The wanderer throws the bottle aside. His pursuers rush to the water like crazy. They forget about the mate and fight one another for the bottle. The chances of the wanderer's survival have greatly decreased. He could make this bottle last at least several days. Plus, he's also lost a lot of fluid because of running. In the beginning, there was no panic because of a lack of water. The ocean dried up, but its waters were salty anyway. People still had seas, lakes, and rivers. But the problem was that the ocean was feeding them. When the ocean water evaporated, it formed clouds. These clouds moved all over the world and enriched lakes and rivers with rain. Now, there are almost no clouds. The sun started heating Earth much more. Lakes and seas dried up alarmingly quickly. At that moment, real chaos began. The sun is going down on the horizon. Sunset is near. It's not so hot anymore. The exhausted wanderer continues walking. In the distance, he notices something that makes him stop, take out a small shovel, and start digging quickly. There's no shelter around, just a flat plain. The wanderer speeds up, otherwise it might be too late. The pit is finally ready. The man jumps down and covers his head with a cloak. A few seconds later, a strong ash storm passes through the entire plain. The smallest particles of ash can penetrate through clothes and get into the lungs. The wind is so strong that it can knock anyone down. When the oceans dried up, the sun began to burn the surface of the planet. This led to massive forest fires. The flames destroyed almost all the trees. Huge clouds of carbon dioxide and ash formed. Driven by the wind, they travel the world and poison everything around. The wanderer is sitting in the pit while a terrible hurricane is sweeping over his head. He thinks of his family and slowly falls asleep. Cold wakes him up. Frosty air chills him to the bone. So it's night now. The wanderer climbs out of the pit and finds himself under bright stars. As soon as the water dried up, almost all clouds disappeared. Factories stopped working. Cars no longer emitted carbon dioxide. Thanks to this, Comets and the most distant stars can be seen in the sky. The Wanderer has seen them a thousand times, but he's still not used to the breathtaking picture. It's like he's looking at the sky through a telescope. An icy gust of wind brings the Wanderer back to reality. He won't survive the night if he doesn't find a warmer place. Before, nights were warmer thanks to the energy of the ocean. Now, as soon as the sun goes down, temperatures drop dramatically. The wanderer needs to move to stay warm. He starts walking faster. Soon, he notices some lights in the distance. It's probably other looters. The wanderer goes deeper into the valley. Stars in the moon illuminate his way. Unfortunately, he is running out of energy. He pulls a protein bar out of his pocket. 
but he needs at least a bit of water to eat it. To digest food, your body needs liquid. If the wanderer eats the bar, he'll only get thirstier. He can't walk and falls to the ground. He checks his pockets and finds a small kerosene tablet. He lights it using a matchstick. A tiny flame protects him from cold. To distract himself from thirst, the wanderer takes out an old MP3 player. He charged it during the day using the solar panels on his backpack. The man puts on headphones. Classical music calms him down. He lies on the ground next to the burning tablet. He needs to gain strength to continue his journey tomorrow. It's morning. In an hour, the sun will start burning the ground again. It's crucial to find water while he still has some time left. The wanderer inspects the territory and notices a spot where the ground is darker. In his previous life, the wanderer worked as a surveyor. He takes a few steps and touches the ground. It feels cool. There's an underground spring here. He begins to dig. The ground is getting wet. Water starts seeping out of the soil. The wanderer fills his empty bottles. Things don't look that bad anymore. It's getting a bit more difficult to breathe with each new day. In the past, phytoplankton and algae produced up to 70% of all the oxygen on the planet, but not anymore. Several days have passed. The wanderer runs out of water and food again. Fortunately, not for long. He's now walking among huge sunken ships. He sees modern aircraft carriers, liners, and even ancient pirate boats. In the distance, he spots huge mountains. The tops of these rocks are what used to be called the shore. The ocean floor is ending. The thoughts about reuniting with his family give him more strength. The man reaches the top and finds himself in the middle of a ruined city. It's empty. Where have all the people gone? Where is my family now? The wanderer asks himself. The man walks through the abandoned streets and meets an old man. He says that almost all the people who used to live here left the city and went to Antarctica. The wanderer has a new goal. He's going to get to the icy mainland no matter what. He will find his family. Oceans cover over 70% of the Earth's surface, so it comes as no surprise that about 50% of the U.S. territory is underwater. We've explored only 5% of oceans. 12 people walked on the moon, but there were only four manned descents to the Mariana Trench, the deepest location on Earth. Pressure is the crucial challenge of going deep into the ocean. At bigger depths, temperatures are extremely low, visibility is zero, and the pressure is so intense, it's harder to send people to the bottom of the ocean than to send them into space. You can't see it, but the pressure of the air pushing down on your body in deeper parts is so big, it feels like more than 100 adult elephants, or 50 jumbo jets, are standing on your head. The pressure is 1,000 times bigger than on the land. Meanwhile, in space, when we pass through the Earth's atmosphere, the pressure drops to zero. We're mapping the planets, but it turns out to be easier than mapping the ocean floor. NASA uses radio waves when exploring space, but this method can't be used for the ocean, since the trillions and trillions of gallons of water get in the way. The Pacific Ocean is becoming smaller, while the Atlantic Ocean is expanding. Many, many years ago, the Atlantic Ocean wasn't even there. It was formed when the North and South American continents separated. Now it's growing bigger at a rate of two inches per year, while the Pacific Ocean is shrinking a bit. Oceans even have their own sound, called a bloop. Its quite loud, low frequency, and pretty spooky sound was detected by scientists back in 1997. Some years later though, other studies revealed that the bloop emanated from an iceberg, cracking away from a glacier. There are lakes and rivers in the ocean depths. It's possible because salt water and hydrogen sulfide make a combination that's much denser than the water surrounding it, which is why lakes and rivers might form and flow right inside the ocean. The world's biggest waterfall, called the Denmark Strait Cataract, is underwater too, in the waters between Iceland and Greenland. It's 11,500 feet tall, and its amount of water is almost 2,000 times bigger than the one Niagara Falls has. This underwater waterfall is possible because cold water is much denser than hot water, so cold water drops into the much warmer Erminger Sea. The longest mountain chain is also hidden in the mysterious underwater world. 
the Mid-Ocean Ridge is almost 40,000 miles long. People studied only about 1% of this ridge. We know less of this chain than we know about the surface of Mars or Venus. Challenger Deep, the southern part of the Mariana Trench. That's a small valley at an extreme depth of a little bit over 36,000 feet. Imagine putting our tallest mountain, Mount Everest, into the Challenger Deep. 1.2 miles would still remain for the mountain's peak to reach the surface of the water. 94% of all living creatures are aquatic, and almost two-thirds of marine life is still not defined. So new species are being discovered all the time, including those spooky ones like the goblin shark, the fang tooth, and the frilled shark. Imagine what more's been waiting for us down there. There are also treasures hidden down below. Oceans have around 20 million tons of gold, but not in a way it can be extracted or mined with any cost-effective methods. It's dispersed all over the seafloor. If we could take it out, each person on the planet would get about 9 pounds of gold. Corals in shallow waters needed to find a way to protect themselves from the sunlight, so they developed some kind of layer that helps them feel good even when exposed to direct sun rays. Basically, they developed a sort of natural sunscreen. Corals are living creatures. No mouth, eyes, or anything else that could say they're more than a rock, but they are in the category of marine invertebrates. A lot of the oxygen on our planet comes from the ocean. Scientists claim it's about 50 to 80 percent. The oxygen is produced by marine plants, mostly algae. A tsunami can be up to 100 feet tall, but waves under the surface are even bigger and can reach a height of 800 feet before they collapse. Antarctic fish have proteins inside their bodies that act as some sort of natural antifreeze. These proteins attach to ice crystals and prevent fish from freezing when the water gets too cold. When you place a seashell near your ear, it seems like you hear the sound of waves crashing on some distant beach, like a shell's memories are trapped inside. In reality, the shell amplifies the ambient noise from your current surrounding. There are a million volcanoes in the ocean depths, and 80% of eruptions happen underwater. The jellyfish is one of the oldest aquatic creatures, and their ancestors lived 500 to 700 million years ago. That makes them more than twice as old as the first dinosaurs, since they appeared around 240 million years ago. Sharks have also been around for quite a long time, about 400 million years. Fun fact, they don't have bones, but cartilage, the same thing our nose and ears are made of. Their skin is covered in a material that looks more like some sort of teeth than fish scales, dermal denticles. With this, their skin kind of feels like sandpaper, so it helps them be quicker and quieter. The Empire State Building's tower was designed to serve as a docking station for dirigibles. At that time, people believed that these airships would become the main means of transportation in the future. The project included gangplanks, check-in and customs offices, and so on. But then the engineers realized that the wind up there was too strong for their plans, and they gave up on their idea. Angel Falls, the largest uninterrupted waterfall on the planet, is more than twice as tall as the Empire State Building. During the dry season, the falling water sometimes evaporates before it reaches the ground. One of the most mysterious sounds ever heard on Earth was the bloop. It occurred in 1997 and resembled the noise of marine animals. But the volume was too great for a sound produced by a living creature. The bloop continued for one minute. It started from a low rumble and then rose in frequency. Antarctica might just look like a giant field of ice, but there's actually a huge continent underneath. That means that it has volcanoes, mountains, and valleys, like any other continent. Scientists have recently discovered that the Antarctic landmass has the lowest point on the planet, as well as huge mountain ranges. If any of the numerous volcanoes were to erupt, it would melt a huge part of the surface ice and increase the spill of ice into the ocean. The sea level would rise and flood coastal areas around the world. The ocean waters would also be disrupted, putting marine life at risk, though all of these volcanoes are dormant at the moment. Each day on the South Pole lasts six months on this continent. The South Pole only has a single sunset and sunrise across an entire year. Early Earth might have been purple, not green. There's a theory that ancient microbes used molecules rather than chlorophyll to absorb sunlight. These molecules likely gave living organisms a violet tint. 
During the Stone Age, the entire population of Central Europe was around 1,500 people, which means they would all fit on a mid-sized cruise liner these days. Astronomers have figured out that the Milky Way weighs around 1.5 trillion solar masses, and one solar mass is the mass of our Sun. A tiny part of this weight is a supermassive black hole at the center of the galaxy and 200 billion stars. The rest is dark matter, mysterious and invisible. If all sheets of Arctic ice and glaciers melted at the same time, the sea level would rise for the height of a 26-story building. Under black or UV light, ripening bananas look bright blue. That's because of the chlorophyll that's breaking down when the fruit is ripening. Because of tectonic plate movements, the Pacific Ocean shrinks every year, and the Atlantic Ocean gets bigger by the same amount. These days, there are only two ice sheets in the world left after the planet's last ice age. The first is the Greenland Ice Sheet. The second, the Antarctic Ice Sheet, is enormous. It's the size of Mexico and the continental U.S. combined. Tsunami waves often go unnoticed. They don't rise for more than several inches above the surface until they reach shallow waters. When the ocean is deep, though, they can travel as fast as a long-distance passenger airplane. Corals that live in shallow waters produce their own protection from the sun. Without it, sunlight would harm the algae living inside them. To protect these algae, which are the main source of food for the corals, they fluoresce. This process makes proteins that act as sunscreen. Almost 90% of the volcanic activity on Earth happens in the oceans. The South Pacific has the largest concentration of volcanoes people know about. There's one volcano cluster that has 1,133 volcanic cones. All of them are active and cooped up in an area the size of New York State. The Zemchug Canyon in the middle of the Bering Sea is the largest underwater canyon ever discovered. There are more treasures and artifacts at the bottom of the ocean than in all museums in the world combined. In 1900, one of the biggest hurricanes struck near Central America and in the Gulf of Mexico. It then went as far as Florida and Texas and is considered to be the most devastating hurricane in the United States history. They first detected it on August 27th and it lasted for many days. By the time it reached the Texas coast, the storm had turned into a Category 4 hurricane. Hurricanes are categorized on wind speed and intensity, using something called a Saffir-Simpson scale. There are five different categories from 1 to 5, with 1 being the weakest and 5 being the strongest. The people of Galveston had less than four days to prepare for the arriving storm that even stretched out to Oklahoma and Kansas. The Great Hurricane then made its way to the Great Plains and turned towards the Great Lakes, New England, and reached southeastern Canada. The storm was so bad that more than 3,600 homes were damaged even though they were sturdy enough to withstand the storm. Given the population numbers back then, it was equivalent to hundreds of thousands of houses destroyed, if not millions. Spotted Lake, Canada. They call it the most magical spot in Canada. In winter and spring, this is just a regular lake that looks like any other. But try going there in the summer when the water starts to evaporate. It'll feel as if you've entered a different world, a polka-dotted landscape with blue, green, and yellow spots. Over the summer, there are over 300 pools there, and they all look magical. Over the centuries, people believed each of them had different healing properties. Oh, and the explanation for the vibrant colors is pure science. Each of them has a high concentration of different minerals. We live inside the sun. Its atmosphere stretches far beyond its visible surface. And even though Earth is 93 million miles away from the star, it's still within reach of the sun's atmosphere. Auroras happen when charged particles from the sun get caught by Earth's magnetic field and crash into the upper atmosphere near the poles. Our planet is gradually slowing down the speed of its rotation. It happens at an unhurried pace of 17 milliseconds per 100 years. Because of this, our days are becoming longer, and still, only after 140 million years, a day on Earth will last 25 hours. 
Earth's southernmost continent, Antarctica, is the only the fifth largest one, but it contains almost 70% of the planet's fresh water and 90% of the world's ice. Antarctica is also considered to be a desert. Lots of rocks on Earth have a Martian origin. Scientists analyze the chemical content of some meteorites found in the Sahara Desert, Antarctica, and other places. It turned out that these rocks had arrived from the Red Planet. The largest sandcastle in the world is located in Denmark. 30 sand sculptors who created it used more than 5,000 tons of sand. To make it more durable, they added 10% of clay, together with a layer of glue. They built it to stand tall against long and stormy winters. Some photons that don't get absorbed are re-emitted, and their wavelength determines the color we see. When you expose a material to sunlight or photons of higher energy, it can damage its chromophores, which is why they won't be able to emit photons at certain wavelengths. Red materials fade in sunlight the most. Their chromophores emit red light in a way they mop up photons of the rest of the wavelengths. From 60 to 100 tons of space dust drift down to our planet's surface every day. These tiny cosmic particles are mostly released by comets, which are usually made of dust and ice. When the sun turns this ice into vapor, the remaining dust travels down to Earth. We've all been afraid of the dark at some point in our lives, haven't we? I mean, do you remember getting tucked into bed by your mom or dad after they read you some scary fairy tale with monsters and dragons or even dinosaurs? But just as your parents were about to turn the lights off and silently step out of your room, you remembered. What if there was something hiding under your bed? Or worse, what if some spooky creature was stuck somewhere in the closet? You could probably get up and check, but it was too dark out there. Wouldn't it be great to have some source of light that would come from within your body? You could always use it whenever you get surrounded by darkness. Unfortunately, as humans, we aren't able to do that. But there are a bunch of creatures out there that can, in fact, light themselves up. That's thanks to a little something scientists call bioluminescence. Animals and fish living in the ocean tend to have this talent more often than others. And you can find these creatures anywhere, close to the surface or deep down at the bottom. 2.5 miles deep if you have a knack for numbers. These creatures use their light for a lot of things, like communicating with other members of their species, luring in prey, and even scaring away enemies. Bioluminescence is basically an organism's ability to emit its own light. Chemistry has a lot to do with it. Such animals use two chemicals, one called luciferin and the other called luciferase. Add a bit of oxygen and BAM! Light! Should you ever wonder if you actually observe bioluminescence or if someone just dropped a glow stick in the ocean, be on the lookout for neon blue, green, or even red sparkles in the sea. They're usually spread over a large area. This can even make the water look like glitter or a starry sky. You can thank squid, tiny crustaceans, and algae for this romantic atmosphere. Now, I've got another unusual phenomenon for you. How about a golden waterfall? I'm not kidding, it actually exists, and it's a natural phenomenon. To see it, you have to drive to Yosemite National Park to the Horsetail Fall. Make sure to plan your trip in winter or early spring. That's the only time during the year when you can see this awesome phenomenon. It doesn't need any scientific explanation. It's nothing more than sunlight at dusk hitting the waterfall in such a unique way that it makes it look like a river of lava or gold, your choice. That's the reason why during this time of year, the Horsetail Fall is also named the Firefall. Unfortunately, this phenomenon is becoming less and less visible within the years, mostly because of drought and other issues connecting with the melting of snow. So, should you ever decide to visit, keep an eye on the waterfall, since the effect is very brief. Ever heard of a dirty thunderstorm? It's also called volcanic lightning. Apparently, specialists looking into the phenomenon have yet to fully grasp what it is. When a regular thunderstorm happens, particles with positive and negative charges collide, hence the giant spark we call lightning. It also makes a lot of noise, which you can recognize as thunder. 
But when a volcano is erupting, some of the volcanic ash particles get electrically charged, and while getting projected into the air with a huge force, they collide and cause electrical discharges. This whole process makes it look like there's lightning coming from the volcano itself. Imagine all that ash, gas, and smoke coming from the crater, and then add some electricity to the mix. It'll make the whole picture look really bizarre. No wonder this phenomenon is called the dirty thunderstorm. Now, how about clouds that look like waves? Those are called asperitas clouds, and they're actually quite close to the ground, unlike your regular day-to-day -day clouds. The name comes from the word aspero, which in Latin translates to rough or uneven. On rare occasion, you may spot such clouds when the weather is calm, but they're mostly associated with thunderstorms. These clouds appear during unstable atmospheric conditions, and surprisingly, they don't produce rain. Even though they do resemble dark storm-like clouds, they also create random patterns, tricking your eyes into thinking you're looking at the surface of the sea from under the water. Another impressive kind of cloud is called mammatus clouds. What makes them so special is a series of bulges emerging from the base of each cloud. One such cloud enters a level in the atmosphere where the wind direction changes. You can see these wave-like patterns in the sky. Australia is the place for you if you like surfing, but not all the waves you can catch there are made of water. Near a town called Hayden, there's a mysterious wave made out of rocks. This granite formation supposedly dates back to 2.63 billion years ago. That's way before dinosaurs started hanging around the planet. Standing at 49 feet high and 360 feet long, the wave was formed as a result of two processes, weathering and erosion. There's softer sediment at the base of the wave rock, which was chemically weathered by groundwater Winds and rain did the rest of the job, causing the erosion of the rest of the formation. Its red, yellow, and gray stripes are made of iron hydroxide, carbonates, and other chemical compounds that were washed down by the rain. You've made it to Australia, so stick around a bit more. There's one more location here that seems unreal. You'll need to fly over this one, however, if you want the best picture. In the western part of the country, surrounded by green woodlands, there's a series of lakes. They're all a staggering shade of bright pink. Out of them all, the most famous is Lake Hillier, a 2,000-foot-long reservoir. It's surrounded by both sand and a forest of eucalyptus trees. This makes the cartoon-like hue of the lake stand out even more. One of the many theories explaining the color of these mysterious lakes is connected with algae. These algae appear to gather high levels of a substance called beta-carotene, which has a red-orange pigment in it. Another explanation involves haloarchaea. Those are microorganisms that sometimes look red. Even if you don't enjoy flying, the lakes are great for taking a swim. They're not toxic, even though they have loads of salt in them. This means you'll be able to stay afloat easily, and the water won't damage your swimsuit. During winter up north in Canada, a bizarre phenomenon happens at Lake Abraham in Alberta. Underneath the frozen surface, you can spot some weird objects that look like frozen jellyfish. It's definitely not the case, as these creepy formations are just frozen methane bubbles. Those are pockets of gas that were trapped underwater and got stuck there after the lake had frozen. They appear when leaves and grass fall into the water and bacteria digest them. This process transforms them into methane. This phenomenon is as beautiful and strange as it is dangerous. The pockets of methane can easily become highly flammable. When the temperatures rise during the spring, the ice melts and these bubbles start popping and fizzing. It's a spectacular sight to observe. Picture a lake filled with soda. Remember not to bring any source of fire. It can be very dangerous for visitors. You can check out these types of lakes all across Canada's Banff National Park. Nature often tends to make its own music. Just listen to the sound of crickets at night or the soothing noise of a waterfall.
But in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, there's a strange geological phenomenon which takes nature soundtracks to a completely different level. These are called the ringing rocks, and scientists still can't explain their unusual behavior. If you strike these rocks with a heavy object, like a hammer or another rock, the stones will make a ringing sound, as if they were hollow, but they're not. What makes the ringing rocks even more bizarre, apart from the mysterious sound they make, is that no animal wants to hang around there. Even though the rocks are surrounded by a thick forest, scientists haven't managed to trace any animal activity in the area yet. Even more striking is the fact that despite all the trees around the rocks, you won't find any leaves lying on the boulders. What makes these rocks so unappealing for both animals and vegetation is still up for debate.